Hello again, everyone. Welcome back. Welcome back. Uh, as you can see, we're on the verge of death. Uh, our general is absolutely unconvinced that we have any chance. And, you know, I, I don't blame him. We are going to be in one rough spot. Um, Japan, screw you. Uh... We're not going to give up our country, even though that might uh, save us a little bit of pain. Short term, um, by which I mean a day. So we're going to ignore them on that. And do we want more civilian factories? Or are we just going to try and build? Uh, honestly, we do want more civilian factories. This, however, is just painful. All right, Japan's going straight for the bullet. Uh, <laughs> so I think for now we're going to cancel the rest of the factory construction and focus more on um, beefing up our military industrial stuff. So we're going to let these go through. Um, when we get at the beginning of the war, will be able to go straight to total mobilization, which will be an amazing help. And put us well on our way towards some sort of survival. Um, but as soon as the war starts, we're going to decrease the speed to probably about three. And I can't switch the laws now for because we really want to do this. Yeah, this is the benefit of playing China. They give you a lot of wiggle room for how you want to play. If you want to play this absolute terrible uh, regime that is willing to sacrifice trillions of people, I'm looking at you, Stalin, with your gray mustache. You can't. Uh, has the most population in the game, I think, when you unite the country. I'm not entirely sure because I haven't played the British Raj. I'm not going to do that until Together for Victory comes out because, you know, currently you can't do much of anything as the Raj. They are a British puppet through and through. But next batch you can change that which will add a lot of fun things to do down there. Hmm. Well, not patch, the DLC, I mean. But the world is looking pretty peaceful. That's what I wanted to say, but... Shanxi, Shanxi is about to die. And we want to beeline towards here now? That... Hmm... That'll probably help. Um, however, for now, I think we're just going to go for the armament stuff and immediately switch to... Come on. There we go. And switch to... this law. Total economic mobilization. We'll reduce our usable population by quite a bit, but... It should be fine. So we're getting more men, which is useful. Uh, we're probably going to be in a deficit soon. Our navy is going to be completely destroyed, so I'm just going to sack them. You're all fired uh, for your own safety. And as I said, we're going to go to speed three. At least for now. Um, I'm going to leave this up to the AI. They want a non-aggression pact new. And I do not want to do that. I want every single able-bodied Chinese person on the border with the Japanese Empire. 
And considering what's going to be going on for a while, let's go up to speed four again and check on our industrial output increases. It's going fairly well. We want to get at least one full production line of infantry equipment and take advantage of that. And, hell, if we're lucky, we might be able to defeat the Japanese army much, much, much earlier than expected. But that is very likely going to be a pipe dream. Uh, against their terrible divisions, we have a chance. But against their regular divisions, they have a great a great uh, superiority in terms of soft attack, which is what matters in combat against infantry and soft division, so to speak. Hard divisions are tanks and APCs, I suppose. And if you continue, I'm going to turn you off, so you need to calm down, game. Yeah. We're probably not going to be able to break through here. I'm still trying to get my head around defense. I believe it is... Okay, I suppose. And how many enemy attacks a unit can attempt to avoid while on the offensive? So basically how quickly our units may or may not wear down. And that is a note for me to... Um... Yeah, we're going to lose Beijing. Thankfully, the capital's not there. There or be terrible. Uh, the AI seems to have improved its naval offensive abilities. Before, they'd just send like a division or a few divisions. Yeah. So the first days of the war, the Japanese are in a bad state. They've lost. 3,000 whole more men than us, so that's that's a thing. Uh, considering what's going on here, I'm going to make a fallback line along this river, and we need to do everything in our power to, you know, not let things get that bad. But having divisions here prepared will go a long way towards our survival. Uh, because there are entrenchment bonuses which really help increase defense. I'm trying to find... I guess it is just 10%. That's unfortunate. I suppose we would have to have taken the Grand Battle Plan Doctrine in order to have any more significant uh, uses for it. Italy's being bad, as Italy normally is, but that is not our concern because we're in grand old China. But let's take a quick sneak peek at Europe. Uh, no, you're... okay. Screw you, Germany. That's usually what happens, especially on historical focuses. And now I'm going to hand it to the Republicans. They held out much longer than they expected. And Spain over here. Um, sometimes it can be really quick. Actually, a lot of the time it can be extremely quick, but sometimes it just drags on and on and on and on and this is kind of an in-between time I mean historically it lasted until the middle of 39 so not too good but not too bad actually and I think about it is kind of bad because this this civil war began kind of late so my vain attempts to break through the Japanese line are not going to work here, so hold. Yeah, we have too many divisions in one spot, and this is not good. 
and it looks like the Japanese pressed the go button. Which is not good. And our deficit of infantry equipment is just increasing, and that is something we should expect for a long while now. Um, in all honesty, we shouldn't be expecting artillery for a long, long time. And this is exactly what we did not want to see. Uh, the Japanese managed to get a breakthrough due to the AI making me sad. Um, and this is going to be a significant breakthrough by the looks of it. Uh, hopefully they continue to advance haphazardly like this and we can get a chance to break through and encircle them. No, we just want to go straight through. Because we will not be able to hold the line long against the Japanese. They are just far too all-encompassingly powerful. Uh, we can, however, give them a hard time. Especially if we're able to get them in a situation like this where we can encircle them. And the biggest help in this war will be encircling. That is actually the best possible outcome, I feel. Uh, however, the AI declaring that to be the wisest choice is not. If anyone noticed that, they selected the entire army to be here. Actually, yeah, this is great because they're trapped here. However, due to this misstep that the AI did, we're going to lose a significant amount of ground here, which is greatly displeasing. But we should be fine. Hopefully. And if we're lucky, we can uh, use it to a good enough advantage to... encircle some Japanese troops, but as said previously, we do not have enough um, strength in our divisions to do so. Hmm. Yeah, it looks like we're going to be able to knock out a few Japanese divisions, which will be nice. I honestly have no idea why the Japanese white pieced with uh, shang -Xi. That is very strange to me. Um, but it is extremely useful to us. Hmm. We do quite desperately need to push the Japanese back, so we'll do everything in our power to do so. Um, Anschluss happened. That is scary, but no concern of ours. Our main concern is um, increasing the Japanese death count. As terrible as that may sound. And still even, which is pretty surprising. Uh, not anymore. Okay, seven more divisions to the front. That should allow us to stabilize it to a tolerable amount. Um, but we should still heavily expect to see, uh, not losses so much as the need to fall back. Trading space for time, that is our key here. Thankfully, the Japanese aren't able to provide much of a... 
much of an offensive down here. Or not significant enough of, of an offensive. And actually, thanks to them doing this, uh, we can immediately counterattack and retake this province, which is tremendously helpful. Because now we have another river crossing that they have to deal with. Um, our current goal is to re-establish a defensive line along this river. Because rivers provide a massive negative to the enemy. 40% is significant. It makes their divisions almost on par with ours. And looks like the Spaniards won. Or one of the factions of the Spaniards. Uh, the fascists won the Civil War. Big surprise there. Considering what we just saw a second ago. We're not going to win that, so let's stop the battle. And how is our industry looking? Uh, we're beginning to run out of steel, which is quite unfortunate. We'll trade with... Let's see. Who can we trade with? I want to do it with someone on our same continent. Who are you trading to? Bulgaria? That is quite random. Well, it looks like we're going to have to do with the commies. Which I don't want to do. Because I think that will require convoys, and convoys will hurt us quite a bit right now, since the Japanese have an impossibly high... Um, well, not impossible, but a, an extremely strong navy that we will not be able to deal with. And we're going to have to exploit the game a little bit, so to speak, in order to defeat the Japanese on their homeland, or wait until like 1950 and do it then, which I do not want to do for what I would hope would be obvious reasons. So we're fascist, and as we all know, fascists are kind of janky, so we're gonna do a thing that's not nice. We're going to put together as many divisions as possible to um, an offensive into the Guangxi clique. And the reason for that is, actually before we do that, I'm going to close our economy. Because we're giving away a significant amount of our resources right now that we are ill prepared to do so right now. Um... It might not seem like a lot, but it is quite a bit. We will lose some factories as a result of this, though. Um, no, only two. It doesn't matter. It'll net us a factory. We'll, we'll lose one factory net um, as a result of this, but that should be tolerable. So we'll do that, and we'll cut off our iron from the Soviets. So we still have a surplus of 11 steel. I believe we'll need 30 per full production line, so not good, but tolerable. And 55 days we'll have enough infantry equipment to completely support ourselves. That, that's nice self-sufficiency on all that. The Japanese are absolutely bleeding themselves on this river right here, which is very beneficial. Um, I'm actually surprised how much attrition they're suffering from. And the attrition is going to be the biggest factor in helping us. As the Japanese soldiers bleed themselves dry, it's not the manpower I'm concerned about because they have a large population base and we're going to have to kill approximately 5 million of them, 10 million of them, and that would just be saddening. Because just because it's a world war, you just don't want to kill everyone. Because uh, that tactic bleeds potential subjects dry and you no know, I'm a long-term kind of guy I I like having a uh, people you can tax I like having people that you can oh I don't like that though 
I very much do not like that. Don't do that, you silly game. Okay. Um, we need more men on the front line. That was unexpected. Um, we have something free to research, so we'll go for support equipment, because we do want to get those going at some point soon. Now this encircle- this, uh, little charade by the Japanese is not good. So we're going to beat them back as quickly as possible, and it looks like it won't take too long. Which is good. And in all honesty, since these guys are falling back, we can probably um, swiftly counterattack and see if we can take back this province now. Because they are running out of supply and are having quite a bit of difficulty, it seems. Which is very nice to see. Yeah, we've retaken another province. Uh. Hopefully that truck doesn't get there in time. Probably will not. Good. So we have a solitary truck attacking. And they will probably fail quite swiftly. So that's fine. Um, we do want to... See if we can get on the offensive here. And we lost our minuscule opportunity to do so in this region, which we've just regained. Now the Japanese... Oh, good god. We're attacking in the mountains, which is a really bad idea in general. But it looks like the Japanese are falling back in enough sectors where we can really take um, an interesting advantage. It looks like we will be establishing a defensive line here quite soon. And when we do so, we should be safe. Um, the Japanese will just attack across and fail each time. If I'm feeling a little bit adventurous, we'll build a Maginot line-esque uh, entity over here, which will uh, be <laughs> a very unfortunate thing the Japanese will have to deal with, but that will be for another time. Uh, this is the end of this episode. Looks like we won't have to use this fallback line, but I am going to keep it here just in case, uh, because that could potentially go very bad. But everybody, I hope you enjoyed, and I will see you next time.